Welcome folks. So for today's tutorial, we're going to render the layout of this Intel 4004 chip, otherwise known as an Intel 4004. You can see it labeled here on the right side of this micrograph. And you can see FF, the label or initials of Frederico Fagan, the original designer of this chip back in the 1970s, I believe. Mm. So where does this come from? This is from the Wikichip website, wikichip.org. And they have a dedicated Intel 4004 page right here. It says here it's released in 1971. And then there is some additional details here about the specifications, the architecture, microarchitecture, and so forth. And if we scroll down further, we can see that the micrograph is right here. You can also see that it's made with a 10 micrometer process or 10 micrometer process. It has PMOS transistors and about 2,250 of those transistors. And if we scroll down a little further, you can see under the designer sections, under the facts, you can see Frederico Fagan. And then a couple of other contributors, Ted Hoff, Stan Mazur, and Masatoshi Shim. There you go. So in case you're wondering where to get the layout of the chip, we can go to GDS Terra 2. Or no, no, GDS 2 Para. Yes, if you type in GDS 2 Para or Para into the browser, you should see a GitHub result. This is a repository of where the GDS layout is located. And if we go to this folder called examples, we should find a file called 4004.gds. And it won't render the GDS here, so we'll have to download it. Okay, let's go to save. And if you don't have K layout installed, it's free. You can just type in K layout and then download it. Download it here under Windows if you have a Windows machine like I do. And then here's the 64 bit installer. All right. So there you go. We can do a little comparison of this, or should I say side by side comparison of this chip layout with, with the GDS. So let's go to K layout editor. And then let's, let's go ahead and open the file. Open 4004. Close this. And here we go. Here's the chip. 4004 is right here, upside down. The Intel logo here on the right. And then Frederico Fagan's initials are right here. And you'll, you'll also notice that these geometries have been fractured into tiny pieces. So in order to make our workflow more easier to work with, what we can do is we can combine all of these fractured cells into a single geometry, the respective geometry of each of each one of these leads, these interconnects and via pads and other, other geometries in this layout. So, and we can also compare this with the photo that you can see here, the micrograph. And in order to do that, we can rotate this whole thing. So we can go to the edit tab and then look for layout and then we can rotate clockwise. And so now the layout is actually, it's actually upright. You can see the Intel logo here on the bottom right. And then right here on the bottom right, there you go. So what we can do next is close all of, hide all of all but one layer. And you can look at these little fractures here. And the fracturing is usually done by lithography software in the lab. So the fracturing is not something you would do manually on your own. You could try, but you wouldn't get very far. So let's go ahead and fix this. Let's clean things up. We can go to the Edit tab, Layer, Boolean Operations, and we can select the first layer as source A. And for source B, let's use the same layer. And then let's use the mode, the union mode, which is basically going to merge any overlapping features or adjacent features of these fractures into one geometry. And we'll feed that back into the same layer. It will override it. And I click OK. And now the majority of the fractures are gone. So you can still select individual sections or individual geometries as you like. So there you go. You see here, there is one section that's it's all branched out like so. But there are little to no fractures on there, which is pretty good. And now it's going to be easier to work with in Blender. All right. So now we can go ahead and hide that layer and move on to the next one. These look like via pads. Let's go to Edit, Layer, Boolean Operations, Layer 3, Layer 3 and then feed it back into layer three and press OK. So there you go. Let's hide that and move on to the next one. And this appears to be a silicon dioxide layer. All right, let's go to edit layer, 
Boolean operations. Layer 4, layer 4, layer 4. OK, there we go. And then let's hide that and move on to the next one. And it looks like a bunch of a bunch more via pads slash contacts. Yeah, these are contacts and via pads together. All right, let's go to edit, layer, Boolean operations, same thing. Five, five, five. OK. And then one more, one more layer. Let's go zoom in on this section here, for example, all these all these fractures. Let's go to edit, layer, Boolean operations, layer six, layer six, layer six. Boom. There we go. So the interesting thing is you can click on, for example, this electrode here, and you'll see how far it gets. This electrode here. And you can try this electrode. You can see that it branches off into all of these parts of the chip. And it also connects to this electrode here as well. And you can see this electrode also branches off into these parts of the chip as well. So it's pretty it's pretty neat. <laughs> all right. So there you go. So that's useful. You can you can visualize that in Blender. So now we can unhide all of the layers. And we can see the chip that's in its entirety. And <clears throat> I did some reading. Here are some notes. You can in, you can screenshot my notes if you'd like. Basically, you get Federico Fragon's initials on the top right of the chip. And the first layer here is a P diffusion region. This is the bottom layer, the very bottom layer. And the very top layer is, well, the electrodes and the metal interconnects. And we can label out the blue color. And then anything that's in black, these would be the via pads or the metal contacts, the contacts with the diffusion region. So in other words, this particular layer, layer number five, needs to be directly on top of layer number, oops, layer number one. And then number layer number four, which is an insulator, should be thinner than the vias. And this insulator needs to be right above these, or should I say right below these other via pads so that it creates this sort of field effect of sorts. So there you go. And then these via pads can more or less sit above some in-well region or some other part of the, the substrate. OK, there you go. And here's some VDD labeling, in case you're interested in that. All right, so let me go ahead and um, close this. And let's go ahead and start changing the color on this. So the first layer, we're going to change this to the color green. And then 3 and 5 are vias. So we're just going to make that black. And then, and then layer 6, we're going to make that blue. And then layer 4, we're going to make that red. So now we have this whole selection of of the GDS layout with the with the colors that correspond to this to these notes here. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this as a DXF. Go to File, Save As, and then select the DXF. Save, and then the default options that are here. Go ahead and just don't change that and just press OK. Okay, let's go ahead and close out of this. Let us. We're gonna have to open Blender. All right, so Blender is going to take a moment to open. All right, so what we can do is move this cube out of the way in a moment. But before, before we do that, we actually need to go to the Edit tab, Preferences. I need to show you something. Go to System, click on Allow Online Access, activate it. And then if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can select CUDA or Optics or some other rendering device option here. That should show up. And then now we can go to Get Extensions. And the tool that we need the most is a DXF import tool. So type in DXF, and then you should see an option that says Import AutoCAD DXF. We need that, so go ahead and install that. And then, optionally, you can export a DXF sometime in the future. You can install that as well if you'd like. And then the other tool we need to do, we need to install, is Material Utilities. So make sure that's installed. It will it will just make the workflow a little bit easier. You can press one of the install buttons for the Material Utilities extension. And then another one that would be useful is something called Edit Mesh Tools. You can also install that as well. Now we can go to the Render Properties tab and then change this to Cycles, change the device to GPU, and then I'm going to set the noise threshold to 1. I'm going to set the noise threshold to 0 for the render, and then the samples, I'm going to change this to maybe 96 or 95 or something. We're, gonna, we're not going to use denoising for today. And then the rest of the options, you can leave it as is. That's fine. Mm, let me see here. Actually, let me, let me click on this Seed option. Animated seed. So that way there's this text, the noise texture that shows up. It's not frozen. And then we can go to film and then change this to 0 0.5 pixels on the pix under pixel filter. And let me see, transparent. Mm. 
we we might want to do let me see I can render a video for you how about that but the the transparency we can use that for for figures if you'd like so let's let's just use transparency for now and then we'll change the we'll turn it off for the video render the animation and then per persistent data under the performance so you go to performance look for the final render and then persistent data it will try its best to memorize the textures and things like that okay and then we can change the resolution of the output to 2k resolution so 2560 by 1440 and the render region and crop to region that's good let's keep that and then the output we can put this into the downloads folder and for today we'll just do i mean for this for this demo we'll do a png image that's fine and if not you can do like a video which will provide a a video file of the animation and then the encoding needs to be set to an mpeg4 and that's about it yeah all right we're all set so let's go ahead and click save and then we'll just do we'll just call this 4004 demo save blend file all right so now that we got that set up let's go to toggle the camera view and then press the control key hold it down and then press the middle scroll wheel on the mouse and then push forward let's fit this in and then press the letter n on the keyboard and I go to the view tab and then lock the view to the camera or lock the camera to view and then add some zeros to this view up here and then decrease this clip start closer to zero and then press the letter n to escape out of that and then let me see here toggle out of the camera view and i think that's about it we are very close actually let's let's increase the size of this cube by pressing by selecting the cube and then pressing the letter s and move it somewhere out here okay that should be good so let's go ahead and start importing so go to file import autocad dxf and then look for the dxf file and then change the unit scale to 0 0.005 and then press import dxf the layout is right here here we go so you'll notice that the layout is not in the center of this entire model. So let's go to the wireframe view and then use this arrow key to select. Okay, so you'll notice that the arrow key can be used as kind of a border, the edge of the border here. Interesting, okay. So let's go ahead and move it to the left. Actually, before we do that, let's click on this tool called Snap. We'll, it will snap it to this grid, move it to the left a bit. And then move it upwards and then try our best to center it okay and then next we can click on the cube and then scale the cube so that it's just just wide enough to fit around this edge here and then we can go to the edit mode use this face selection mode right here and then select this left face and use this arrow tool here to move this face to the left and do the same thing with the right face move that to the right mm. be a little too far huh okay we'll just leave it right there and we'll move we'll try to move it to both sides let's see here mm. i think it's, that's fine as is let's go ahead and select box let me see here let's box select the inside of this of this layout and then let's deactivate the snapping tool and then we'll just try to center this inside of this geometry here that we're going to use as a substrate and that's pretty good actually and now what we can do is change to the y perspective click on the cube go to edit mode and then we can shrink this cube all the way down the the face we can push the face all the way down here and we'll use these these grids here as cells we're going to combine so given that we do have five total layers in the chip and two of those layers are are in one layer which is the vias we can count that as a single layer so in other words we have about four total layers that doesn't include the substrate or should i say um it's right here you got four grids that we can count so let's push this down to let me see here we got two grids here we can move this up about right about here so we have room for four layers on top of this substrate okay and then if we zoom in a little bit further you can see that there's this 
grid line here. Let's let's align it with this grid line. All right. So let's go ahead and select this bottom face here, and then push this upwards. We can make it maybe about here in between this these two grids. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna move this upwards a little bit. I'm gonna align it with this grid line here. That's that's good enough. I'm gonna return. I'm gonna turn the snapping tool back on and then go back to object mode. All right. So now what we can do is relabel stuff. We can call this layer zero. So L zero underscore substrate. And then the next layer, we're gonna call this L one underscore P diffusion. And then the next one, L three, we're gonna call this L three underscore via pads or via pads underscore general. And then L four underscore SI. O2. And then L5, we'll call this L5 underscore via pad oops, via pad via pads slash contacts. And then L6 underscore electrodes slash interconnects. All right. There we go. So now we can save this once more, and then let's hide all of these other layers except for the P diffusion layer and the substrate. So now what we can do is move this view up here a little bit, and then we can say convert into a mesh. So we can also set the origin to the geometry. There we go. And now what we can do is go to the edit mode while it's still selected, and then hmm, let's go ahead and select the mesh. Uh, see here, we need to use the edge selection mode here, and then select the mesh. Here we go. And while uh, while everything is selected here in edit mode, you can press the letter F on the keyboard, and it will fill in these geometries. Look at that. Now, now that these faces have been created, what we can do is go back to the negative Y preset viewpoint, and then use the F key to extrude this downwards. Oh, control Z. Press the E key to extrude. Here we go. And then have it snap to that that next grid point there, the coarse grid point. And so now we have effectively created created the three D model of this diffusion barrier, or not not diffusion barrier, diffusion layer. Let's go ahead and go to the viewport, the solid viewport shading, and now we can see this three D model of the diffusion layer in this model, in this uh, this chip layer. What we can do is bury this into this substrate. So let's go ahead and use a snapping tool and move this down a little bit, and. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. And we don't want this to be exactly below the surface of this substrate. So let's go ahead and stick it out maybe one or two cells, maybe two cells, two grid points here, tiny grid points. And then zoom out a little bit. And you'll see that it looks like it's actually buried into the into the substrate. And the thing that's going to make this significant here in a moment is if we add some color to the substrate and also to the diffusion barrier, we can see that that's going to look like it's buried in there. It's behaving as a diffusion diffusion layer. Okay, so now what we can do is select the substrate and then go to modifier tab and then type in bevel. So we're going to add a beveled edge. We're going to make this the corner a little bit smoother. So change the value to 0 0.002 and then add 10 segments. Oops. And now the substrate is going to have not exactly sharp edges. We can go press apply here and there we go. Now what we can do next is we can go to Material tab, and then we can change the color of this substrate. We can we can actually change the material as well. We can change the material to something something more interesting, something like mm, subsurface scattering. And if we go to the viewport shading, the subsurface scattering gives us kind of soft. It can give you a soft effect, make it look like it's like the the light is penetrating the skin of the, the feature. That's what it can do. We are interested in the Christensen, Christensen Burley mm, subsurface scattering method. And then what we can do with this is change the color to something blue, dark blue, maybe a little bit of purple, mm, make it a little bit darker, increase the scale a bit, and then we can increase the radius a bit as well. That's possible. And there's no alpha value here, so you can't make it transparent. 
and you can still see you can still see this layer that's been that's been added as a diffusion. And so we can click on the diffusion layer here, and then what we can do is add a material to this, and then we can change the color of this diffusion barrier, or diff I keep saying diffusion barrier, diffusion layer into something like maybe hmm, like a light blue color or something. Maybe maybe kind of uh, an actual purpley looking color. Maybe. There you go. Something like that. Looks interesting. And then we can add a metallic look to it and then decrease the roughness. Not too much. And then we can also change the specular on that as well. We can change the specular to a slightly brighter color than, than the purple. Then, let's see here. We can add some subsurface scattering features to that as well. Increase the radius. Make this 50. Make this, uh, I don't know, 20. And there you go. You can still you can still see the difference between the two. And if, if you're not satisfied with that, you can always increase the brightness ever so slightly. And the other thing is the, the, the lighting is something that matters as well. So you may have to increase the, the radius. Maybe you're going to need to use an area light or something. This is something you would have to play around with. Yep. That's how it is. And then you can see that here. We, we've already gotten so far in making this chip, this, this chip rendering possible. The thing is, if you're not too happy with this, the way this substrate looks like, you can always change it. You can change from background subsurface scattering back to a principled BDF, BSDF. It's confusing. Sometimes you end up saying BDSF, but it's BSDF. But we can say, let me see, not, not metallic. Yeah, just stick with principal BSDF if you'd like. And then you can change, you can change the color back again. And then we can increase the metallic feature a bit. Crank this up to like 0.95 or something, or 0.98. And then you can play around with the roughness. And then you can you can still add some subsurface features to this as well. But the difference here is that you can add an alpha alpha value. The alpha value will basically allow you to see right through the material. So it comes it becomes somewhat transparent. And light can actually penetrate through that as well. And the thing is, if you add the subsurface feature to it, it will actually scatter light so slightly it starts to actually sparkle, like you can see here on the screen. It sparkles a bit. So that's more or less something that we did with this diffusion layer as well. OK, so now we can return back to the solid view real quick, just, just for a sneak preview. And let's go ahead and turn the diffusion layer off. And let's go back to the via pads. So the via pads, we can go ahead and select Go up here, go to the wireframe. And what we can do here is go. Oh, OK. So before we go to edit mode, let me right click here, convert this into a mesh. And then while it's still selected, now we can go to edit mode and select all those features. Press the letter F to fill in these geometries and make them faces. And now we can go to the negative Y preset viewpoint. And we can press the letter E to extrude and then pull it downwards. There we go. Now we can go back to the object node. And then we can right click it, set the origin to the geometry. All right. So given that these are the general via pads, let's go ahead and just move it downwards a little bit. And then let's see here. Let's place it right on top of this, this layer here. And then it should be a diffusion barrier or diffusion layer right there. And now we're actually going to use the silicon layer in a little bit to provide a Boolean operation right on top of this or right below this via pad. So let's keep that right there. And then we can go to the rendered preview. And you can see the, the via pads have been added. Check that out. Pretty neat, huh? All right. So we'll add the materials here in a little bit. Um, what we need to do next is hide that and then bring out the SIO2. So let's go to guided diffusion barrier as well, or diffusion layer. Let's go to the wireframe view, click on the SIO2 layer. And then what we need to do is convert this into a mesh. Go to the edit mode. And while it's still in wireframe and using the edge selection, go ahead and select everything again. And then press the letter F. Wonderful. And now we can go back to the negative Y viewpoint perspective. And then let's extrude this using the letter E and then extrude it down by perhaps 
two grid points or two two grid snapping points. That's that's pretty decent. Okay, so now let's go back to the object object uh, object mode. Then what we can do is set the origin to the geometry. Go to the negative y view view perspective here, and we're going to put this silicon dioxide layer exactly right on top of this diffusion diffusion layer. All right. Right there. Nice. Very nice. And then we can go to the solid view and see what that looks like. There we go. Pretty neat. Uh huh. <laughs> this is pretty great. Yeah. I mean, in real life, if we if we were looking at this from like a fabrication perspective, the silicon dioxide would go here, and then it will dip down a little bit right here, and then come back up. That's if this diffusion layer that exists right here, if it was sticking out just like that. Yeah. I mean, on the other hand, what we can do is just if we want to make things more, hmm, let's see. If you're if you're really willing to compromise here, what you what you could do is just go ahead and make it even with the with, with the substrate for real, and then you can be on your merry way. Let's go ahead and save this. And now we have this silicon dioxide layer sitting flat even with the substrate, and it's intersecting and overlapping with that diffusion layer that's there. I mean, I raised the diffusion layer just a little bit so that way it's not it's not showing these weird artifacts in the render. Okay. So there you go. Let's go ahead and hide the silicon dioxide layer, and let's move on to the next path, the via pads. So these these next layers. Let's see. Let's hide the diffusion layer. This this via pad here. Let's click on this, and then go to convert this into a mesh. Go to edit mode, select everything, and then press the letter F. And you can see all the faces have been filled. Let's go. Use the Y preset viewpoint here, and let's make this one grid, one uh, one coarse grid downwards. So press the letter E to extrude, and then move it downwards up to about there. And this actually should touch the the bottom of the fusion layer. So let's go to object mode, and then set the origin to the geometry, and let's move it down. Go. And now it is this via is is even with the substrate. The thing is, if we want to make it even with the diffusion layer, that's also possible. So let's let's, let's try that. There you go. Now it's now it's resting right on top of that diffusion layer. See that? These are these are the contacts of those. I, I think that's that's fine as is. Yeah. For the for the rendering purposes, that'll be fine. If not, I mean, if you're not satisfied with that, you could always just make it make it flat and um, more even with the substrate instead. That's also an option. I mean, you have so much thing is you have so much freedom when you're doing renderings. It's the thing. We can also check to see if this diffusion layer really is interfering with itself. Let's let's move it one cell down and see what that looks like in the render viewpoint. Um, you still can see it actually, so that's that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, let's keep it. All right, let's press save. For a good measure, and then now, now let's move on to the electrodes. So let's go to the wire view. Click on click on the electrodes, and then we can convert this into a mesh. Let's go to edit mode, and using the edge selection again, let's select everything. Make sure you don't miss it miss anything. You can all, you can also use the Z viewport, and then you can press the letter F to fill in these spaces. Look at that. There we go, and then press the letter Y. And then we can move this one coarse grid, extrude, press the letter E, and then move it down. And there you go. It is Electro. Let's go back to the object mode, set the origin to the geometry, go to the Y perspective, and then let's look for the via pads. Okay, so the via pads right there, and the via down here. Okay, now let's, let's put it right in contact with the via pads. There we go. Yeah, it looks good. And now we can release all of the layers. 
and then see what it looks like in the rendered view. And now we have this. Actually, let's go check the viewport shading view. There we go. So now we have this 3D model of all of these wires, interconnects, via pads, diffusion layer, and so forth on this chip. We can save this. And before we continue, what we need to do is do one Boolean operation that will subtract the that one via pad layer so we can make room. OK. OK, OK, OK. So which via pad was it? Is it this one? So these are in contact with the diffusion layer. So I'm not concerned with that. I want to click on this general via pad here. And then what I want to do is go to the modifier tab. And then we're going to look for Boolean. And then what we're going to do is select silicon dioxide. So now the silicon dioxide will be directly beneath these via pads. So if I click on that, let it calculate. Now I can click on apply. Just wait, wait a moment, let that calculate, and it's done. There we go. Now we can go ahead and click save. And we have the whole chip here. Check that out. There's the logo. There's the Intel 404. There's the initials. Yes. OK, so let's hide the electrodes. Let's start giving some color, giving some life to this. These video pads, let's go ahead and add some texture to them. Let me see, uh, metallic. Let me see. You can decrease the roughness to about maybe 0.1. Oh, 0.1's good, yeah. And then the specular. Specular's OK, I think. As is. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And then we might want to add a small amount of emission to this. So the emission just makes it glow a little bit. So let's do that. Let's use the okay. Let, let's use the hex value here. Yeah, and then let me scroll down here and then paste the hex value in here, and then increase the strength to maybe 0 0.005 or something. How about 0 0.05? Okay, that might be overkill. So 0 0.005 is probably good. Make it glow just a little bit. So there's there's some sparkle on this chip. It's gonna make it more interesting in the render. Let's go save. Now let's move on to the silicon dioxide. There. Let's go ahead and click on that, and let's go add some material to this silicon dioxide. Well. Let's give it a light blue color. How about that? Not too light. I mean, not, not too green. Because silicon nitride, on the other hand, if you deposit it, it looks kind of green. But here, we'll just get, we'll make it a light blue color. How about that? And then give it a metallic finish. Decrease the roughness. OK, and then let's change the subsurface scattering. Crank it all the way up. Increase the radius to like 20 and give this one a value of 5. You can play with the scale. It's not doing much, really. Make it long. And then a specular. We'll change the specular to some much lighter blue, I think. And then let me see emission. Yes. So let's change the emission to the, to the same color value as this hex hex value here, and then give it a small emission, just like that one, point zero zero five. Okay, looks good. To be honest, I don't know what kind of effects the thin film does to this whole structure, but I guess we're gonna have to find out. So there you go. Silicon dioxide is in there. It's not. It might be a little too metallic. And then let me see the, the roughness values. It's a bit much. Let's try point zero one nine five or zero point one one nine five. That should do the trick. Or how about 0.35, maybe? Yeah. It's already starting to look interesting. That's what I'm talking about. It's got some amount of emission. It's got a subsurface scattering. Things are looking good. Then let me see here. Let's also give this a small amount of emission as well. So let's do 0 0.005. The next layer we need to do is the other view pads. Let's just let's just give it the same value as the, the one the one we saw before. So Let's click on this, this button here. Let's click on this, and I click this button, and then it should be a sort of a gray color. Material 2. So the other view pads use material number 2. Yeah, there we go. Now both of them are the same color. Great. Now let's go to the electrodes. Let's make the electrodes golden. So click on a new tab here, make it a sort of a, a brighter yellow. Crank up the metallic value, and then decrease the roughness. So now that the roughness has been decreased, we can also play with the The thing is, Mm. We saw that in the real chip itself, oops. the real chip, if we look at the, the micrograph here, you can see that the metal is thin enough that you can see through. It's translucent. So well, what we can do is also make this somewhat translucent. The alpha value, if we decrease it all the way down to zero, then it will become completely transparent. You won't see it. But if we crank it down just a little bit like that, you can make the metal seem as if it's kind of translucent. Look at that. So we can change this to like 0.725 or something. And it's, it's already starting to look even more interesting. And now what we can do is we can also add a I don't know, specular here. Let's see, the specular, we can make it maybe a slightly brighter yellow. And then transmission, oh, we can try it. No, not transmission. We can make the emission same color as this right here. So select the hex value for this. 
pasted here, and then 0 0.005. So it's emitting light a little bit. And then subsurface scattering, increase the weight of that. And then increase the radius. That should do the trick. Okay. And so you'll, you'll notice that it's actually starting to sparkle and glitter here, here and there. That's that's great. <laughs> and the light is not bright enough to actually do anything with this. So, I mean, you can always increase you can always increase the scale of the light as a thing. You can make it like uh, I don't know, 10, 10 meters by 10 meters. Look at that. Uh, the thing is, this area light is too, it's too rectangular, it's too disc. Scale it up if you like. And then push this up here. And it might be a little too direct. That it's not actually doing much. We, we can't see much reflection, is the problem. So, in order to overcome that problem, we can come here. Let's see here, what, what kind of rotation are we working with? All right, so what we can do is select this entire geometry that we just made, and then we can rotate this ever so slightly. And then we can go to this Object Properties tab, and we can actually change the rotation on this. Um, yeah, let's, let's undo that real quick. What we can do is select this entire geometry here. Uh, so here, try not to select the light. There's dang lights in the way. Move it up. Uh, it's very stubborn. Okay. And then press Control J, or select the substrate, and then Shift box select the whole thing, and then press Control J. Now we can actually play with the origin. Let me see here. Set the origin to the center of mass. There we go. And now we can actually rotate this. So let's go here and then rotate this value. You can see that the Y value is changing here. We can do a negative uh, sixty degrees or something, and that definitely looks interesting. So what does the camera view look like? Looks like that. And then what we can do is we can actually rotate this if we like. And let me see here. What we can do is try to center this a little bit like so, and then we will introduce an empty. So go to add, look for a curve. Let me see, actually, add empty and arrows. There you go. And then the empty, all we have to do is click on it. And then go to the object properties, and then look for relations, and then we can parent this to the camera. But it seems kind of backwards, so we can click on the camera, and then go to the object properties, and then relations, see that? Relations, parent, and then parent it to the empty. There we go. So now we can actually click on empty, and we can rotate this. We can rotate this on the z-axis here around this chip object that we created. Check that out. That's pretty neat. We can save this. And there really isn't much interesting lighting happening here. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing. We need to fix this. So what we can do to fix that is we can introduce some interesting geometries. We can go to Mesh. We can add a cylinder. And then we can go to this. Oh, shoot. Add Mesh Cylinder. And go to this tab here. Increase the vertices to like 100. Then the radius we can increase dramatically to like 20. And then increase the depth to like 10. Or no, 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 let's increase the depth to maybe 100. That's better. Because we can always increase it even more. And then we need to actually, let's see here, we need to rotate it. Let's rotate it on the x-axis, 90 degrees. So type in 90. And we are in edit mode here. So what we can do is use the wireframe, use the edge selection here, or face selection, actually, on both sides. Press the letter S, and then press the, the letter Y to lock it to the x-axis, and then stretch this out way out here somewhere. Like that. Here you go. Maybe, maybe a little bit further. So do that. Press the Y. Stretch it way out here. Yep. So that's one interesting feature for sure. What we can do is go to uh, Object Shade Auto Smooth. And then we can turn this into an array. We can say, oh, yeah, let's go apply that. I want an array. I want to create an array. So type in array. So you'll see that an adjacent cylinder has been formed. We can increase the count. How many cylinders do we want? Maybe, uh, what about eight cylinders? Yeah, and we can merge, and then we can press apply, and then we can say, all right, so now we have all these cylinders here. What do I want to do with it? I want to change the origin to the center of mass, and I move this over to the left. And I want this to be an interesting lighting feature. So I'm going to put this up here. Yeah, that looks good to me. Check that out. That's so cool. That's going to be a really cool light. And we actually can copy that and create another one on top of that. How cool is that? Yep. Yeah. So now we have something to do. Let's do, uh, let's, let's create it. A glass BSD out of this under the materials, and then we can decrease the roughness here. And you can play with the index of refraction all you want. But this one, we need to turn this into an emission source. So let's go down here straight to emission and just crank this up to like 10 or something. And there you go, we got a light source. That's going to create all kinds of interesting light features. And we can also go to add mesh and then add a torus as well. So now we have a torus and we can increase the, the major radius. It's not large enough, it looks like. Let's make this even bigger. And play with the. Yeah, really isn't large enough. So, I mean, I did as best as I could. I'm going to do like 100, seg uh, 100, 100 seconds here, 100 seconds there. Then I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to click on Shade Auto Smooth. And then I can use the S key to scale it, actually. Make it bigger. 
like that. And then I make a copy of this. I can paste it. I can move it upwards somewhere way up here as needed. Yeah. Now we actually <laughs> look at this interesting light setup. So what I can do here is yet again add a material to this. So this light, this light is material six. So what we can do here is click on that and go to material six. And same thing here, material six. And then press file, save. Let's go to the render view and see what that looks like. So look at this. We got some uh, interesting op optical effects here. We can we can play around with this this value as well. It's bending it's bending light. I mean we can also filter we can filter it so that it has whatever lighting whatever color of light we want. You can think of it like a, like a, sh a light shade. <laughs> okay, that's that's pretty good. We have some we actually have some interesting light here. And then the other thing is we can also add a bevel to this as well. You can say bevel one zero zero two and segments. Wow, well, see. I just want to make sure that both ends are not it doesn't have holes in it. Okay, that looks fine to me. Let's see. Go to the camera view. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, wow. Uh, this light may be a little too bright. Let's crank the emission value back down to uh, let's see, four. And let's rotate around the chip, shall we? Let's go to empty and then go to one. And then let's go to, let's set this, let's set this value to zero real quick. And then this chip, we can actually rotate this chip. Let's rotate this. There are definitely some interesting reflections on this chip. That's that's the reason why I wanted this. I wanted this to happen. Look at this. And then the other <laughs> the other thing is that mm, I'm gonna have to change back to the original position. The the chip here is actually upside down. So let me rotate this. 180. There we go. Um, and then yet again the chip is upside down. Let me let me go back this way. What's the angle on this? Okay, 120. Okay, so what I can do with this is. Negative 60. There we go. Ooh, relief. And there you go. Look at that chip. Um, the only thing is the substrate is kind of bright. That's a problem. Let's, let's change that substrate value to a much darker value. Something more, more modern. That's so much better, somehow. All right. There we go, fellas. So let's go click on empty and then go to object properties and then change the. Let's click zero on this. Move this up a little bit. And then whatever the scale is. We can change this to let's see uh, 250, and then we can change we can increase the value to 360, and then give it a keyframe, and then change the interpolation mode to linear. And now when we play press play, we'll actually rotate around the chip. Yep. And then the thing is the chip we can actually rotate this yet again. We can point this to something something of an interesting interesting angle, something like that. And we can zoom into this chip as well. Like both of those interpolation motion be linear. Yeah, always be linear. I think we're zoomed in a little too much. Let me zoom out. Okay, okay, okay. I think I think we got it. So we got this nice reflection here. It's not it's not reflecting all the way per se. We can rotate it a little more. Yeah. Now we can get that interesting angle there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> this is super cool. I think it's about change it to zero. It'd be flat. And then I can rotate this 45 degrees. Go to render view. And there you have it. We can actually just zoom into it as it is right here. Look at that. All right. Now that is what I'm talking about. Move it to the left. Uh-huh. <laughs> Great. Okay, now we can press save 
and then we just render it. Yep. So that is the Intel 44, 4004 chip that we just rendered. And we can actually put this into a PowerPoint if you'd like. But I'm going to say 4004. Save image. So that's, that's a 25.6, that's a 2K version. But the thing is, what if I change the samples to, I don't know, something like 895? Save, render image, do the same thing. See what happens. Not the greatest resolution. I can also change pixel density to 3840 by 2160, which is 4K resolution. Save, render image. One thing is, I would have to change the samples. Hold on. I need to change the samples back to mm, something more manageable. <laughs> like uh, 175. Save, render image. See what that looks like. Check this out. It's definitely much sharper. Press the escape key. And then other thing is, you may realize that the light might be a bit too bright. Yeah, we can crank this down to three, see what that does. Oh, three looks significantly better. 2.5 maybe? <laughs> yeah, uh, two point five somehow looks slightly better. Yeah, okay. I will. I'll save this. I'll render the image. Let's do its thing. There's the chip. Event. Audio 4, demo, 002, save image. Yep. Okay, so I will render the animation here in a bit, and then you can have the final, you can have a final look at the, the rendered view of the chip once it's done. So in the meantime, thank you all for tuning in to today's rendering session. I might change the angles ever so slightly for the for the video render. So yeah. Yeah.